Okay, so I told you at the beginning of my first lightning talk or ignite talk that if you're interested in any of this stuff, you can follow me on Twitter at don't use this code. Let me show you why that's my Twitter handle. So a couple of years ago, I got it, kind of got tired of the explicit self in Python where you have to type self as the first argument for every instance method. So I said, could you do something like this? You could have like an underscore variable that gets injected into the function. You can make it an instance method. Then you never have to write that self as that first argument. And I called it implicit self. And it turns out this is very easy to do in Python as long as you have C types or CFFI. You can find the structure of the Python method. You can take things that are supposed to be read only and make them read write, like the closure. You can rewrite the bytecode to turn, if you saw my talk earlier today, to turn what was originally a load global into a load deref, and you can make just, just work. And so that was pretty easy to do. And with ma many of these hacks, they become boring the moment you accomplish them. So I started to look for something that was harder. Now, it's an interesting puzzle in general, what you can do to manipulate a running Python interpreter. I have a number of different ways to change a Python interpreter by importing modules. And this is actually something that can be useful in practice because many of us use tools that rely on sandboxes that are written in Python. And many of us may rely on Python versions that have some security mechanisms, like only allowing signed code to run. And the moment you can manipulate your Python interpreter, you can just turn off those mechanisms. This is one example. This shows you why any sandboxing tool that includes the use of C that allows the use of CFFI or C types is trivial to break. Because the moment you can get a pointer to some part of uh, the memory for the Python interpreter, you can start fiddling bits and change the way the Python interpreter works. What I want to show you is that this is actually even easier to do, even in, even in cases where you don't have the ability to get access to memory through something like C-types or CFFI. Because if you're on Linux, it turns out on Linux, there is a proc file system. And proc file system has the ability to look at two things. For the current running process, inside proc self, you have two files, one called maps that gives you all the memory maps that that process has loaded, and the memory itself. So here's a fairly simple Python script that loads up for itself all the memory that it's loaded, traverses through that memory to find a specific object, namely this sentinel value, finds that sentinel value, writes directly to memory without using C types or CFFI or anything but simple reading and writing of files, and changes X into Y. We think that strings are immutable in Python. Well, if you have raw memory access, you can make anything that should be immutable, mutable. This was pretty boring once I finished figuring out how to do this. It's a very simple technique, but it's a generalizable technique across any language. You can always get access to raw memory in any language on Linux where you have a proc file system. What I want to show you is the most sophisticated Python hack I have ever seen and the most sophisticated Python hack you will ever see in your entire life unless the person who came up with it comes up with something wilder. Because this is nothing compared to what you can really do. It is not my own work. It is the work of a friend of mine named Joe Jevnik. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, follow him first because this kid is amazing. I'll give you a premise for this. When I was doing my implicit self, one of the things that I do is I inject this self variable into the closure for the function and then swap a load global into a load deref so that this variable gets picked up from the closure. That turns out to be very simple. And a while back, Joe wanted to, he had, he had a simple question, which is how do you make closures mutable? Because currently the closures are immutable. And using C types, I was able to find the flag that makes the closures immutable and flip that. If you take that out, what can you do? Well, it turns out, with a little bit of craziness in terms of how you construct a Python function object, you can create a Python function object that has corrupted bytecode that allows you to write into the closure. And this is my approach. He has an even, better, an even better approach for this that works both in CPython and in PyPy. But this is not the actual hack. I, I know of projects in the world that require that, that, that required that the Python interpreter be impossible to mutate in order to enforce certain security mechanisms on that Python interpreter, certain uh, sandboxing mechanisms. And if you take out CFFI, take out C types, take out PyWin32, and don't run it on Linux, none of these techniques work, except we were able to find one that did. I was thinking, well, how do you usually do things like corrupt memory? You find an array access that you're not supposed, an array access without bound checking. So I thought, let's go to the Python interpreter and see if we can find one of those. Well, it turns out when a Python interpreter stores a local variable, it does this thing called set local. And set local is a macro that uses get local. And get local does an array access but doesn't check the bounds. So every time Pyth the Python interpreter has a bytecode that stores a local variable, it does an array access 
with no bounds checking. So if you can figure out a way to corrupt that index, you can write arbitrarily in memory. And there is no way for anybody to block this without making substantial, significant changes to the Python interpreter, far beyond what could be done easily. Joe found a way to actually use this. And what I'm going to show you is just off the wall wild. He has this gist that contains a single function called tuple set item. He made tuples mutable, because why not? And here's how it works. This is, this is absolutely the craziest thing ever. We start with the range, which is 2 to the 16th. We create a Python template that gives you a Python function, which is actually a Python generator. You inject something to the generator, some callable to the generator. You call that callable and determine if you set a local variable. And you repeat this section of code 2 to the 16th times. So this is a function with 2 to the 16th branches inside. You dynamically construct one of those. You take the code object, and then in a while loop, and I love this comment, you spray the heap with generators. So what you do is you find the memory you want to mutate. You start creating Python objects on the heap until one of them gets close enough to the object you want to mutate that you can, you can corrupt that array index and jump to that memory you want to change. Notice there is no C code in here. This is all pure Python code. Once you do that, and once you find one that's close enough, and here's a little thing. You find one that's close enough. You pass in a generator that repeats false up to the index of the value you want to change. So you inject a generator into that. It gets called. So you actually have like a branch selector here. You select the branch you want. You write the local variable you want. Notice here, since the co-const does not actually include that local variable as part of the frame, it jumps out of that function to the memory you want to mutate, and you manipulate it. And the only risk is you might not be able to load something close enough to that function. You might run out of memory. But I haven't actually seen that happen in using this code. This is amazingly sophisticated, all pure Python, and gives you arbitrary memory access to any C Python interpreter on any platform whatsoever. So the moment somebody comes up to you and says, look, I created a sandbox in Python. You can, as long as you can exec code, which you probably can, because actually there's only one exec here, and we can get around it. We could write the bytecode raw. So as long as you can basically import a module, I can break that sandbox using Joe's trick. This is just remarkably sophisticated. I'm so impressed. I hope some of you have a chance to look at Joe's work. It's amazing. So I wanted to share that with you because I don't think anybody's ever really looked at this or talked about this anywhere else. Thank you.